today I'm going to uh, present to you a little bit about Toyota Kata. Uh, the name of our presentation today is Where is My Sensei? Um, as Samir said, I am Beth Reed. I work with Northrop Grumman Corporation in Huntsville, Alabama, and have been here for almost eight years. Uh, David was going to co-present with me today, but he's having a few technical difficulties with the connection, so he may pop in or out. We've got him set up as a panelist, and so he should be able to speak, but uh, we may have a challenge. David is my sensei. He is, works for the Alabama, Alabama Technology Network out of Auburn University. It's an organization set up by the state of Alabama to assist manufacturing organizations um, in implementing lean and uh, to success to keep industry in the state of Alabama. I met him about five years ago. We hired him as a consultant here at Northrop to uh, assist us and we've become very good friends and colleagues since then and he is actually become, as I said, my sensei. This is an outline of what I'll be talking about today about uh, the different uh, aspects of the Kata model that you'll see. And just a little Dilbert cartoon that we threw in here that kind of, I think all of us from time to time see those Dilbert cartoons as practitioners and, and find them sort of humorous. So we want to start talking about um, struggling. Uh, our question to you is, do you struggle? Well, we know you do. We all struggle. We have um, challenges trying to implement lean throughout our organizations, various different challenges. We have all these wonderful tools and, and, and great skill sets, but we still have a challenge uh, getting the message across. So our question to you is, what is the current health of your lean program? You know, think about that a minute. Is it just really going great, or are you having some challenges with that? Do you receive the support you need? I know a lot of companies do have problems with support. They'll start out, you know, drinking the lean Kool-Aid and wanting to get down the road, and then it just fades out and is eventually forgotten about. Some recent research that we found is that only 2% of the companies really are satisfied with their continuous improvement program, and about 70% of the companies actually do use some sort of continuous improvement program. So that was interesting that everybody knows about it, but only 2% are satisfied. So going a little bit further, we looked at who's doing well in the industry. A lot of the large U.S.-based manufacturers use the lean techniques and the tools and, and the uh, people to implement that, but there's a lot of room for improvement. As you see on the screen, we have about 73% of U.S. manufacturers are currently deploying a Lean or Six Sigma program. Only 49% of the senior manufacturing executives are happy with the program. 44% of those senior executives um, believe their Lean programs are effective. But only 5% of those executives rate their program as extremely effective. 22% of the manufacturers really don't use either Lean or Six Sigma. So let's talk a little bit about what the reality is. Are you struggling in your organization to keep everyone motivated to improve? And what are your methods with that? Some of the things that um, I've run into in my career is when I do Kaizen's, I pull a lot of people together um, in the process. and. That's when my motivation really kicks in with my teams. They really start understanding it when you work with them one-on-one -on -one, as you would in a Kaizen event. But I can't do a Kaizen 24-7 with everyone to keep them motivated. So you have to find something that does work outside of your, event, or outside of your scheduled events. Do you have problems with loss of support or loss of funding? I know in the defense industry, funding's always at the top of the list of challenges that we could possibly have. So if we think about the dynamics of culture as we lead into this discussion about Kata, you have your values and your vision in the very center, and that's what your organization is really centered around. <clears throat> Pardon me. But it's fed by the knowledge and the behaviors and the competencies within your organization driven by the structures and the technical systems, the social systems, symbols and stories within, your, within the company, but it's affected from external sources such as technology, climate, economy, 
political, even natural resources, and social trends. So you are constantly having to adapt to a changing environment uh, to keep your culture moving forward and be stable. Now, where is my sensei is kind of a, a catchphrase that um, we came up with based on Toyota's practices. They have been successfully transplanting their plants all over the world by doing this long-term coaching or developing these senseis to develop these leaders that are able to use their systems that they have put in place. Most of us don't have the resources um, or the um, ability to use this pattern. David, uh, the other co-presenter, he has dealt a lot with a lot of the manufacturing organizations around the area, and Steelcase is one of these that has developed a lean management system, um, and it develops the leaders through active learning and practice, you know, in the lean, lean uh, uh, arena. So Aristotle once said, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. And that is what we have to develop, are these habits. And I'm going to go into detail about that. Toyota Kata. It is probably the best tool I've come across um, in the last seven years as something that's very simple to do and very effective to um, drive your program and keep the momentum moving. But it starts with you as the practitioner, and that's the beauty of it. If you have the support of your organization to implement a lean program, um, that's great. But when the momentum starts slowing down and you start struggling trying to get people to continually think about um, continuous improvement, driving affordability, finding defects and reducing those, it's the Kata method that really, really empowers you to keep yourself moving forward. So I'll review with this, review this with you here on the next couple of slides. Let's think about what you see around the organization and what you can't see. That was something that was very profound. Mike Rother wrote the book on Toyota Kata, and I hope you all have a copy or will go get a copy because that's what this presentation is based on. When Mike went over to uh, Japan to actually tour the Toyota facility, there, were, there was visible evidence of the practices and the tools and the principles that you could see. But the thing that you couldn't see was the thinking and the routines. And that was one of the main things he pointed out in the book. It's, it's, that's how they keep things going is it's the invisible methods of thinking and the culture shift that took place that drove all of the things above the line that you could see. So kata is a way to keep your thoughts and actions synchronized in a very unpredictable uh, environment. So you have um, processes and very dynamic changing conditions. And kata will develop kind of a cadence for you to work through the unknown in a very structured method. If you'll look at this slide, in, this, in the middle you'll see this gray area with the little red circles. The gray area is going to represent um, your, your issues, your problems, your, your uh, obstacles that are preventing you from moving forward. And the little red circles around each of those black dots are the specific ones that are really, really hindering any progress. It's kind of like um, as the picture on the upper left shows, you know, the, when you go to the fair or Chuck E. Cheese, I don't know if you all, all have those, but there's a game called Whack-A-Mole, and you take a mallet, and if it pops up, you hit it on the head with this mallet. And that's kind of how we view going after these problems. You just kind of start whacking away at them as they pop up. What Kata teaches us is to identify three things. And that the first is your current condition. Where are you today? What is happening around you? The second thing is your target condition. Where do you want to be? Where do you want to get to? The third thing, what are the obstacles preventing you from getting to that target condition? As you see, when you start thinking at it methodically like this, you can identify the critical path 
as demonstrated in the bottom uh, uh, gray circle um, graphic here, you identify the critical path. And one by one, you go after each one of those obstacles in, a, in order. As you proceed through each obstacle, you go back and review uh, how much further down the road it got you towards your target condition. And as you work through these obstacles, what you will find most of the time is a lot of the other obstacles will disappear because the issues have been resolved, will resolve other issues uh, that feed into it. What you have to do is develop a habit um, to go through this. Starting with your current condition, once you have identified that, and um, your target condition, where you want to be, you will walk through the pattern very much um, repetitively by asking five key questions each time. As a, there's, there's, as a coach to this Kata method, you will be able to direct people to walk through the process and be able to question them um, to find out what's stopping them from moving forward. And you set a deadline to it. So the coaching cycles, we'll go over the five questions here in a moment, um, are what develop the kata to mutate throughout your organization. Because as you start coaching and teaching in this method, other people will start coaching and teaching their people around them in this same method. The improvement kata is a purpose-driven activity. You have to have clearly identified where you are now and where you want to be and your target and your uh, challenges that are preventing you from getting there. So you can do it in kind of like a, a, a calendar or a project, you know, a dated uh, outline. So in one week to three months out, you, you start at the process level. You start looking at what your next desired condition is to be in order to reach a deadline. Um, then you can look in the bigger stream, bigger, bigger picture, one to three years out in a value stream level. Um, and then off in the future with the uh, aligning with the vision of the company out in the distance um, uh, three to five years. So we look at the knowledge threshold. The knowledge threshold is something that was really uh, jumped out at me in, in uh, Mr. Rother's book. Um, it's the point where you start guessing. You know, you have all this information and you just start, um, people ask questions or they want to know more information and you don't really have the data to back it up and you just start guessing. That's your knowledge threshold and that's where you have to really focus on driving your kata behaviors to address that. You have to speak with data to be able to make good, intelligent decisions to move forward. When we use the PDCA, Plan, Do, Check, Act, um, we can increase our knowledge threshold by going through a cyclical, cyclical um, repetitive cycle to continually learn about the current condition, moving towards the uh, target condition. Now, as a manager or as a director or leader for your lean program, um, teaching the improvement kata is kind of your middle management level person's job. And what they will do, they will be able to develop the skill set within your teams by uh, coaching them through an improvement kata. You identify, again, the current condition, identify the obstacles and the target condition, and then Leadership is responsible for pushing the direction of where the organization wants to go. In the improvement kata, you have to understand the direction of where you're going. You have to understand completely what the current condition is and establish the next target condition. So each time you, you, you identify and tackle one of your obstacles, you have to go back and reestablish current condition and target condition. It is just a repetitive cycle that continually moves 
moves you forward. It can be something as small as deciding how a desktop should be laid out, how a soldering station should be laid out, to something as big as moving a, a culture or change within an organization. But each obstacle that prevents you from getting to that current state, to the target state, you run through these cycles to, to knock them out of the way to be able to get you to the next target condition. You just never stop repeating this cycle. The five question card, uh, we actually use them around here. Some of our uh, uh, managers and leaders carry them around and use them to coach with when a person comes up and throws a problem on a desk. Uh, our managers will walk through these generalized questions and maybe not use the actual verbiage, but um, ask them where they want to get to with this issue. What is the issue? What is the current condition now? What's preventing you from getting there? Which one are you going to address today? What's your next step? What do you expect to happen? By coaching through these five questions, it really develops your employees to start thinking in this method to be able to solve the issues and not make assumptions and actual have actual data to make good decisions on getting down the road in a problem. On the back of the cards that we have, the reflection part of a kata or coaching kata is very important as you develop your employees. What was your last step? What did you expect to happen? What actually happened and what did you learn? Um, as coaches, uh, being able to get your employees to identify these things makes them stop and think before they start the next current condition, target condition, uh, kata process. Now, David was going to talk a little bit about this. This is a key concept for us, that the two fundamental routines at the core of coaching cycles are the five questions, coaching dialogue, and a rapid PDA cycle. I don't know if many of you, or probably a lot of you, use some type of a, a, a recordable document to uh, capture your PDA cycles. Now, this is what your the person you're coaching or the learner would use um, as you walk them through these five questions and get them to reflect. They document what they learn. They uh, have that, that uh, data in front of them and are able to keep moving forward with their process. There are several different types of forms uh, that you can use during the coaching cycles. As you see here, this is a, um, a very visual uh, um, workplace uh, manufacturing floor. Um, what you have there is actually a the main coach and a second coach that's observing uh, the main coach and then you have your learner. The main coach is, is leading the discussion overall. The second coach is kind of uh, going to start going out on his own and becoming a, a full-time coach as well. Uh, but is uh, spending time observing from the main coach. The learner, of course, is the one that's going to be documenting and repeating all of the PDA cycles um, to continuing moving forward. This is a photograph of the uh, book cover. Um, he has a website there that I have documented here for you. He has lots of uh, free downloads uh, regarding this book. Uh, Mike Rother, if you haven't had the opportunity to uh, see him or meet him, um, I actually attended a uh, two-day uh, seminar with him reviewing this book and his techniques that have been outlined in this book. Phenomenal. But uh, please visit his website and be able to uh, download some very useful forms and uh, the five questions. And he continuously monitors that and updates it from time to time. So uh, check it as often as you can to watch for changes. So how do you keep going? When your program starts to lag or slow down or you have lack of funding, um, this is a challenge that we've had here uh, in the defense industry as, as I spoke of earlier when we have uh, contracts that slow or finish or we have uh, uh, financial challenges. We have to keep the program moving forward. 
any individual within an organization can keep moving forward by making small improvements. If you don't have the backing of your organization, walk down the hallway, walk down to your production floor, observe where you might see the some improvements can be made and start behaving in this coaching method. You don't have to go announce to everyone, hey, I'm going to start doing kata because uh, people will probably uh, push back. If you just exhi um, exhibit it without telling people, they will just start to behave that way to, um, to, to change this culture. You have to capture the data and show your results. You can't just use um, made-up uh, estimates or whatever, or no vanity metrics. And I'll talk a little bit about that um, myself here in a minute. Um, and you have to go to Gimba. You have to go and see firsthand what is going on and not rely on what others tell you. I can't tell you how often I'll sit in meetings and see people, well, so-and-so said it was this way. Well, then it must be that way if so-and-so said it was. No, you have to go and look firsthand to be able to uh, see for yourself. And you have to teach others to do that as well and not go by just what uh, people say. So we'll talk a little bit about value versus waste. Um, which of our efforts are value creating and which are wasteful? That is something to always keep in mind uh, for yourselves and when you're teaching others or trying to implement kata. We have to learn to see waste and then systematically eliminate it, which is exactly what kata provides for us. What our value is, is, is anything that provides benefit to the customer or what the customer is paying for. Our job is to find a synthesis between our vision and what customers will accept. Our job is not to capitulate to what customers think they want or tell customers what they ought to want. That's kind of uh, Lean 101 uh, identification and waste. So we have to have good metrics. Uh, we've struggled here. Um, we have different divisions and sectors, and everybody has a different way they want to see metrics reported. And some of our people here report the same metrics in about six different ways. But our metrics have to have follow the three A's. They have to be actionable, accessible, and auditable. If we follow those things, you will always have very clear, concise uh, metrics that will drive your organization. If you don't have these three um, items in your metrics, then it's going to just be what we call a vanity metric. And vanity metrics are just kind of, oh, well, it looks good. You know, these, you see these stoplight charts. And stoplight charts are very good. They're a very visual demonstration of uh, current state. But um, sometimes they don't really tell the true story. Is it actionable? Is there something I can take away from that that needs to be done? A metric is either good or it's bad. So I need to take good action or positive action to make things move uh in a different direction, or I need to fix a problem that is presenting itself in the metrics. Is it accessible that everybody around can get a hold of it? Um, and is it auditable? Can you go back and and uh, is treat it like action items? You know that we we hold people accountable to it. I like this quote: "The vanity metrics wreak havoc because they prey on the weakness of the human mind." You know, and this is very true. When the numbers go up, people think um, the improvement was caused by their action or by whatever they were working on at the time. Finding out what is actually going on is extremely costly. Unfortunately, when numbers go down, um, it results in a very different reaction. Now it's somebody's fault. So we have to think about doing very clear and concise actual metrics that, that follow the three A's. Actionable metrics, as we say here, are the anecdote to the problem. When you can clearly see what the cause and effect are, and it's clearly understood by everyone, then people are better able to learn from their actions. And that's what the secret to kata is. You know, you're teaching people to develop this cadence or this rhythm within the organization to identify what's the current state, what's 
target condition that I want to get to, and what are the obstacles preventing me from getting there, and how am I going to identify, how I'm going to address each obstacle, um, and in what time frame am I going to do it? As coaches for Kata, that's exactly what we do. We ask these questions, and then we teach them by getting them to reflect on what they learned from each step they walk through. I like this quote at the bottom, human beings are innately talented learners when given a clear and objective assessment. And it's easy. I mean, it's just that easy that, that to practice uh, kata. So our, our bottom line is you've got to be your own sensei. You have to go out and push uh, people to think differently if, if they haven't already adopted some of the kata principles. You have to do the PDA cycles to incrementally improve. And you need to tie your kata practices to coach and mentor those around you. And make the connections, you know. Get people to understand what the connection is between the, the, the obstacles that they are facing and getting those addressed and getting them forward motion to their um, future state. And you must above all, capture the right metrics. You have to speak with accurate data that is actionable, accessible, and auditable. Now we will take any questions you may have or follow up. I sure wish David would have been on here. He could have covered his slides a lot better than I did. Uh, hi, Beth. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you for the presentation. And uh, This is great. And um, I just... Um, want to remind everybody that uh, we are open to questions now. And uh, actually, we have a couple of questions already. Let's take a look here. So, uh, Beth, uh, uh, we have a first question here by uh, somebody who already, already left. Um, how does management become competent at coaching when they have not been through the improvement process. Uh, this is a that, case where we're starting to implement these concepts. So management is who needs to learn how to do this the worst. And as practitioners, it's kind of like you're implanting a virus within your organization. It just will spread as you start to practice this in your, in your organizations. And that was one of the key things that really um, attracted me to kata. It's a very, very easy, but it's it's very, very concise in how it's implemented. And and as the sole practitioner here within my organization for Lean, my management does support what I do, obviously, because they hired me, uh, but they're not real big uh, sticklers on um, practicing Lean. So I kept running into roadblocks and, oh, no, we have to go do this because this is so much more important. We can't do lean right now, you know, and that's just, that just drives me crazy to have that issue. Well, when I went to and learned about kata, I came back and started practicing it, um, unknown, unbeknownst to my managers. And my director here actually was the one who really picked up on it uh, the quickest and wanted a copy of the five questions. And I gave him a 10-minute you know, download kind of on what Kata was all about, gave him a copy of the book of which he read. So it's, it's, it's easy to start because it starts with you. It's not some big program you have to roll out. And as, you're, as you practice it and start teaching people with everyone you, you interact with with your organization, if you behave this way with the Kata methods, they will start to copy you. They will start to um, emulate what you're doing because it'll just it'll all of a sudden become the law, you know, on how people behave. And that's it takes a while because that is a culture shift that does take some time. So if you're we're all at different levels in our organizations and and if you're just by yourself or on a team fighting an uphill battle, just start practicing the kata yourself to others around you, start being the teacher, and the others will start to adapt to it. I hope that answers your question. Yes, um, thanks, Beth. Uh, we have another question, and um, again, a uh, reminder for everybody, uh, 
We are open to our questions. Please uh, type your questions in the chat window, uh, which is the feature of this uh, presentation tool here. Um, so the next question uh, I have is, what is Gemba? Gimba is a Japanese word that means um, true north, the point of origin, the center. Uh, Gimba is where what I call all the action happens. It is where the process actually takes place. So um, years ago, um, I can't remember his first name, the Toyota guy, Yogi, I can't even remember how to pronounce it, but and that's horrible. But he used to go, the president of Toyota used to go down to the floor and just stand there and observe what was going on around him. That was called going to Gemba because he is where the process is actually taking place and seeing for himself how the process moves. Here at my organization, I have uh, Gemba walks where my leadership team and I walk the floor, walk the engineering area or walk, we walk a different area each meeting to observe and question. We try not to get in the way because you want to be, uh, not to slow down progress, but you want to observe and, and see for yourself what is going on in your plants or in your processes. So that's what Gemba is. Okay. One comment that David had posted for me, since he's having uh, technical difficulties uh, communicating with us, he said, the Kata process provides a structure for developing the skill at coaching. The five question card actually helps you do this. Thanks, but uh, another question. Explain a little of the meaning of the word Kata and how this came to be applied to the industry. Sure. I can actually uh, give you the definition. Let me get it here real quick. A kata was a, a, uh, a Japanese, uh, like a, uh, what do they call it? sumo wrestlers, that's what it was. I was struggling for that word. That um, it's a method to, to do that, and I'm looking up the definition real quick for you because I don't do good recall with that right in front of me. And I'm not getting my hands on it really quickly. Um, if you will send your um, email address, I can send that to you, um, but I can't put my hands on that uh, right up front here real quick. Okay, uh, that's fine. Uh, Beth, do you have the contact information slide which you want to put up there so that uh, attendees can take it down at their pace? Absolutely. Okay. Thanks. So um, I'm going to go to the next question, if it's okay with you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, uh, what is the website for the book, the Kata book? Okay, I have that on the screen right now. It's http colon forward slash forward slash www dash personal dot u m i c h dot e d u forward slash tilde m rother r o t h e r forward slash homepage.html. Thanks, Beth. Um, and uh, um, if you, it, it's on the screen, and again, the presentation is being recorded. It, it will be uploaded uh, soon. So if you miss uh, this one, you will always, uh, you can always go back to this and, and uh, get a reference from the presentation. Uh, the next question. What will enable us to change to a culture of learning, uh, which is PDSA versus culture of meeting targets? What's the question? I'm sorry, repeat that. Okay. What will enable us to change to a culture of learning versus culture of meeting targets? Oh, I, I understand. Versus meeting targets. Um, a kind of certainly will help you change to that, but a culture change takes time. It's not something that happens overnight. Um, it is behavior driven. So if you start um, 
takes one to make one kind of kind of idea. You you focus on this process and it's a repetitive process that will provide true results which should in time provide you the culture shift for everyone to adapt that method of thinking. When you focus on this process through the daily through daily practicing of it, um, you continue to move forward and your results will um, become very obvious because it may be small in the beginning, but it does gain momentum as more people start adapting to this method of um, of, of cyclical improvements. Does that make sense? Um, yep, um, that's, uh, that's good. Uh, uh, if you can pull up the, the vanity matrix slide. Um, mm -hmm. Somebody wants to, um, do you use checklists during your Gemba walks? And what do you cover? I don't use checklists <clears throat> for my Gemba walk. I use an action item sheet that I've developed, a, a log. Because um, we do our gimbal walks a little bit different than the traditional gimbal walks. We have actual um, different departments and different functional areas within my organization do do um, daily checks with a checklist. Where we ran into some problems with checklists is people will just pencil with them. You know, it just we couldn't verify because we started having issues in some areas where these checklists were being used. And it presented a real problem, so we started finding out, well, they're pencil whipping it. So we had to go back and start um, um, buddy checks, for instance, in our integration because um, we had some defects coming through the process. Well, if they were um, using the checklist and the buddy checked off on the checklist, then how on earth did this defect move through? So we had to create yet another step to ensure that the buddy system was being followed. Um, but for me at Gemba, what we use is an action item log that I keep that is uh, on our centralized portal internally that everyone has access to, that we monitor that um, daily. We report it out every week in our staff meeting of who's got outstanding um, actions from the Gimbal walk. Next question, who takes the responsibility for eliminating the obstacles? The team or the coach? I think everyone takes uh, responsibilities. If you run into an obstacle, um, you're going to need help to remove it if you can't remove it yourself or if you can't address it yourself, if you're not empowered. So everyone has responsibility to address obstacles. It just depends on the situation and what the obstacle is. If um, for instance, I want to go down to the to floor. I've got uh, my integrators are having a problem getting their cables to the floor, um, and it's not coming out in a timely manner. Well, my integrators may not be empowered to make those cables move faster. Well, that's a big obstacle for them. So um, you have to identify who does have that power, who, who is able to remove those obstacles. Now, that would be, from my perspective, looking in. Now, if my integrator's down there, he should be able to go to the next person, in, like in our production control, that pushes the cables out and find out what the issue is and be uh, empowered to go do that. It's, it's about um, everyone assuming the responsibilities for any and all obstacles because you, you've, you've just got to be able to PDCA through improving and constantly moving forward um, in your, in your um, in your day-to-day -day operations. Thanks, uh, Beth. Um, uh, I had a couple of questions uh, regarding the sharing of the presentation. So um, uh, going back to logistics, uh, the presentation and the question and answer session are being, uh, is being recorded. It will be published. And uh, uh, regarding sharing the actual presentation, uh, Beth, that's a question for you. Uh, if you're comfortable, uh, please. Um, let us know. Uh, are you going to be comfortable sharing the presentation with the audience? 
Absolutely. You know, this was uh, presented at ASQ last year and published, so um, we're more than happy to send this out to any uh, anyone that requests it. Perfect. Uh, thank you, Beth. Uh, so um, if you want to bring up the, the your contact slide uh, back again. Uh, For the book. Yeah, um, so that they can... Um, they can contact you. Oh, for me, my contact. Yeah, for, for you, for the, for the presentation, because we have a couple of questions. Uh, another question, how often do you schedule your gamble walks? Are daily gamble walks instead of daily production meetings effective? I am a big um, proponent. Um, well, I'm just not for meetings. There has to be an agenda. There needs to be actions and there needs to be deliverables coming out of meetings. We have meetings to have meetings, you know, to schedule meetings. And so meetings are waste to me. Um, my gimbal walks uh, used to be weekly and they're now monthly due to the environment uh, challenges that we have here. Um, they should be every day. Um, somebody needs to be, you know, in your organization that, that has the uh, uh, power, should be down there every day. My checklists, things for like our safety, our forklifts, our um, um, uh, engineering and, and integration processes, um, those are also every day. We have a production meeting every week, once a week. We have a staff meeting, which is a different set of people, once a week. We try to keep meetings to either, either once a week or every two weeks because um, they, they're just a, a time suck, if you will. You need to be actually doing, doing things. Now, when you're talking about doing kata activities and focusing on kata, um, daily kata activities support the daily meetings that are required. Now, you have shift changes and things like that that the people need to communicate with one another and, and have those meetings. And you do it through using uh, kata activities to uh, communicate that with your daily meetings. Thanks. Um, this is another uh, next question. It's kind of long. Um, do you believe the growth of the Tara method within industry is the future or a follow-up on lean and do they complete with or do they com complement each other? Do they compete with each other or do they complement each other? I think Kata is just another tool for our toolbox of, of lean uh, tools. However, I feel that this is absolutely a very uh, simple tool that um, complements any existing program that uh, may exist. Um, I'm trying to multitask here. The, um, this process, this, it's the same process that Toyota uses. It is just, it's the essence of lean. It's not a compliment. It's what David is, is typing to me over here. Um, does that hopefully answer your question? I'm going to put our contact information up here for you. Okay, that's great, uh, Beth. So uh, I, I I hope that answered your question. Uh, and if um, if if not, uh, please feel free to contact either Beth or her email is on the screen, uh, or or uh, and or David. Uh, um, which is which whose email is on the screen as well. That's great. Um, another is, do you teach other people in your organization how to do kata, and if so, how do you select these people? Um, my organization is very different right now because we're going through a production break. But yes, I teach others how to do kata. And I do it just simply by anyone I talk to. I explain them what the kata method is. I usually start with my uh, production floor supervisors. I start with some of my mid-level managers, um, um, educating them on, on what it is, the method of how it is. It's not a big secret. It's not that uh, we don't tell anybody what it is. 
um, or call it by its name. It's it's um, um, it's just a simplistic approach, which is what works in my organization uh, to to um, base the foundation of our improvements on. David said, this is the core practice that we use at Auburn. He's out of Auburn University, War Eagle, uh, with most of our clients instead of Kaizen events. What are some good guidelines for a new learner who is alone in this practice to select an area to use this? Is it related to the span of control? And if so, in what ways? Um, can you repeat that again? Just the. Um, uh, uh, basically, I, 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 what they're asking is uh, advice for a new learner or, or who is who is new to this process uh, is um, to um, I couldn't get the question very well. For someone that's new to lean or a new practitioner, oh my gosh, this will just change your world because it is so simple. I probably didn't make it sound so simple, um, but it is, it is so easy. Anyone can do it, and it's just common sense. So um, anyone, if you can go to Rother's website to get a lot more information on Kata, if you can get the book, I strongly suggest you do that. They have it on Amazon. They have it through ASQ. They have it in various uh, places. Um, the, Rother goes into a lot more detail about the way the mind works and how people think um, to, to explain the principles a lot deeper than what I touched on today about how kata uh, works and why it works so well and just how simple it is. So absolutely, I think a new practitioner um, can do this. As a matter of fact, it will be one of the, the, the easier and, and quicker tools to use. What's harder is getting your managers to adopt it, your culture to change to adopt it, um, and and being able to push the culture change that comes with what Kata brings. Look up the exit cycle process at Rother's website to establish basic stability, and then use uh, Kata to improve. Okay, thanks. Um, again, a uh, bunch of people asked, again, the copy of presentation, and some of them actually got their address in the chat window. Um, it's, um, it may be uh, difficult for us to pass uh, the interested uh, people's email address to the presenter. Uh, however, uh, I, I see Beth and David's information is on the screen, um, and uh, this as the presentation is being recorded, it will be on the screen. So please feel free to contact them um, directly to get the presentation. And, yeah, just uh, send me an email, and I will uh, send David or myself an email, and we will uh, forward you a copy of this presentation, no problem. Okay. Thanks. Um, could you describe an actionable matrix versus non-actionable matrix? Um, an actionable, let me think a minute, an actionable metric would be, I'm trying to think in my terms, uh, from my organization. If we have um, a production break, which we've had here recently, uh, we keep up with our um, employee headcount, right? And so we have to staff accordingly uh, based on what our prognosis is down the road. So one of the metrics that our engineers present is what the headcount is month by month, week by week, based on the productivity of what's happening on the floor. By providing us this information, that's a very actionable metric because we can clearly see when our employee headcount's going to be more than what work is on the floor. So. So we can draw the correlation and understand what we have to do with that. Um, there's probably a much better example, but off the top of my head, that's um, the biggest one I can think of. It's very clear, very concise, um, and when you're presenting it, 
um, a discussion certainly surrounds it, and you, you leave the uh, meeting, or we do anyway, with an action associated with it. A non-actionable uh, metric would probably be something that um, uh, customer satisfaction, although that's pretty important. If your customer is uh, currently satisfied, I'm trying to think in, in terms, again, of our meetings, um, we do customer sa internal customer satisfaction within the functional areas. And if we have green and blue ratings, meaning you know excellent and very, very good, there's no action until things start um, um, turning yellow or red in your in your metrics. Now David has piped in here and said, SQDCM are your primary actionable metrics. You can't affect earnings per share, but you can affect hours per unit. Thanks, uh, David. Thanks, Beth. Um, a couple of logistics questions um, popped up regarding our use for the presentation. Uh, our use will be distributed within three to four days uh, for the people uh, who, for the for the attendants who, who who were here for the entire time um, uh, as for the ASQ guidelines. So that's probably answer uh, a couple of them right there. Uh, and the next question: How important is the visual management to Kata? How important is visual manage? It's it's critical. You have to be able to see. Um, you have to be able to see. I mean, one of the foundational books in um, Lean is value uh, stream mapping, learning to see. Um, it's it's vital. If you can't see it, you can't fix it. If you don't know about it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, do you have any advice for convincing management to focus on a customer value instead of strictly revenue matrix? Oh, wow. That's, that's a hard one. Um, if, if you're not focused on what the customer wants, then you're missing the whole point. Um, just, I don't know how to to get your management to see that other than providing a proof or data that shows um, why the customer is so important. But it, again, it depends on the industry. But um, yeah, that's a tough one. I don't know that I have the uh, answer for that one. No problem, Beth. Um, somebody said the Mike Rother email address stays file not found. Um, I am not sure uh, what that means, but uh, if it, it has to do with the link, uh, um, it, 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 I, I would just say to contact you directly. So that you yeah, can I'll go over. Google it again and make sure that the um, that the uh, email address is uh, somewhat. Um, he works at the University of Michigan. That's the UMIC portion of it. Um, uh, you can Google. Uh, Kata, Mike Rother, and it'll take you right to his website. Um, that was the one that we put in earlier this year, and it could have changed between then and today. So, um, but I would suggest you um, uh, Google that. David just put it up, and it's showing the same as what we put out there. So, I'm not sure what the challenge may be on that. Okay, uh, I guess a couple of people answered that question. They Google and they were able to find it. Um, Great. Another is, uh, can you comment on the use of Kami Shabi tool for visual management? I'm not sure I understand the name of the tool. Okay. Yeah, that was the question by somebody. Um, I, I would just recommend um, him to get, uh, get in touch with you. Um, what When using Kata rather than Kaizen but, uh, event, how do you track benefits from the mean activities compared to the other normal improvement actions? How do I track the data? Uh, how do you track the benefit from the lean activities compared to other normal improvement actions? 
Well, I track my, my benefits a little bit different. I build business cases against everything we improve. It's all about numbers for us here. So we've either saved time or we've saved dollars, you know, or we've saved uh, distance, right, steps. Um, uh, and so that's personally how I track. I track everything. And whether it was done in a, you know, through Kata or it was done through a Kaizen or it was done through just somebody figuring it out, I track it that way. So my methods are probably a little bit different, but uh, we, we track and document all improvements. We've developed a software tool here within our organization that we use that is a collaborative tool to allow people to um, exchange ideas and and document suggestions and implement and test suggestions, you know, so it's all not in email, it's all in this neat little tool that we have. And so through that, we go through and we capture um, improvements as they're taking place because I can't possibly oversee every single improvement here, but our mindset here is everybody improves, right? Uh, so we we capture those and I assign dollar values to most of those, you know, where dollar value is applicable. Um, these are certainly things that we use um, in our proposals and, and in our um, um, ability to get additional work because uh, for our current customers, they would love to see that we're saving them money or, you know, reducing costs. Certainly for our uh, mother Northrop, you know, our corporate uh, people up above us love it when we uh, reduce costs and save money. So we document it all. Okay. Uh, thanks, Beth. Um I just have to say this. Uh, I, I have a couple of questions uh, left, but uh, um, uh, just to uh, respect the audience time, um, uh, the presentation is uh, the webinar is officially ended. So, um, but we will continue to go through all the questions um, for some time, and these questions will be recorded. So it's up to you now. This point onwards, if you want to stay on the on the call or you you want to drop off, um, and um, it, it, it's up to you. Uh, I just want to thank you, everybody, and uh, I also uh, want to thank you, Beth. Um, um, what is, uh, this was not possible without the um, uh, you know, webinar committee, ASQ, and, and all of you. So thank you so much. Um, thank you. So thanks. Uh, uh, so Beth, uh, I have we have like uh, I guess two to three more questions. So uh, if we if, mm -hmm. if, if it's okay, okay. Uh, the next question is: What was the acronym just mentioned concerning the EPS versus hours per hours per minute? And that was one David gave, which was the um, for the action item for the actionable metrics. Uh, yeah, I'm. Yeah. Um, yeah, he I, said I'm the pretty much going through sequence. So I, I I don't know when. Um, yeah, I think it was the SQDCM, and David, if you can type in what that stands for, um, are your primary actionable metrics. You can't afford earnings per share, but you can affect hours per unit. So so he wrote in SQDCM, and I'm just waiting for him to respond if he's still online and able. There it is, safety, quality, delivery, cost, morale. Okay. Um, Thank you, David. Okay, um, this is just a statement made by somebody, and um, I will welcome your comments. And um, uh, somebody said that the the kata uh, is is dangerous because you, you're just walking and you don't know what's going on on the floor. Um, I'm not sure if you want to add something there, but um, I know kata is a. Um Maybe they are not understanding. You know, kata is not where you just walk around and go. You know, challenge people to improve things. Kata is just a way of thinking. It's a it's an approach that you can use to coach people how to think differently about approaching problems. Um, so I would disagree with that statement. Um, it certainly made a big difference and impact um, here at my organization by, by practicing it um, with kata. Um, it, it's a method. It's a tool. It's, it's a. It's a. You. You. Um, you're driving a behavior or a thought pattern um, for behavior. It's not the same as a gimbal walk. A gimbal walk is something totally different. Uh, so the two are not the same thing. David's input here is kata is not the same as a gimbal walk. It is a highly structured technique to help leaders improve processes and develop people. And that's exactly right. It develops uh, people. 
um, while improving processes. That's the biggest thing I took away from it is, is it develops your, your employees, your coworkers, your peers, um, teaches them to think clearer in my mind and in um, um, a more leaner fashion. Okay, thanks, Brett. Um, and uh, uh, a few comments, uh, just want to summarize. Uh, uh, people really like the presentation. They want to thank you. Um, so actually, one of the person already added, already bought the book on the Kindle. So I think uh, <laughs> this, is, this is great. Uh, I cannot believe this. Um, the, the world is so close. I mean, I, this is this is really great. Um, now this well, is a I long appreciate question. That. I appreciate oh, oh. that, but I struggled a little bit today without my sidekick, my sensei David. David's uh, the brains behind this. I tell you, he's just really very well practiced at this. But thank you. Um, you're welcome. Um, so this is a long uh, question. Oh, bear with me if I may read that. Uh, I have used the coaching kata, but the card, uh, which is in the word card is in coach, that was deployed. Uh, by my employer contains three questions on the reverse side instead of four questions. What was our last step? What actually happened? Um, what did you learn? It does not contain what was expected. At a first glance, this does seem like a significant omission. What is your opinion? Well, and, and I think that um, as Rother will tell you on his website, he's always, you know, updating, changing what comes best. Um, what, when you use the, the question, what did you expect to happen, it causes the employee to, to think, to, um, to have to um, divulge where his mind set was and his method of thinking. It kind of, um, it's, it's setting the expectation, right? So uh, David's saying here it's super important to set expectations. So by asking the employee, what did you expect to happen, um, is just a, a a way of really clearly communicating with them. Um, maybe they had some totally different expectation than what happened, and there you see the light bulb go off when they actually verbalize, "Well, I expected, you know, X, but Y happened, you know, um, and and now I totally get it because of of you know this." So. So the uh, asking them the expectation, particularly for people new to the process, you know, of, of walking through this, I think is um, it, it helps both you and and the uh, other person because you understand how their mind works and they understand how um, expectations um, can sometimes be different. <laughs> Outcomes can be different than the expectations. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, I think that. Uh, that hopefully did answer the question that was asked. Um, I again, a few comments. Uh, they people like the presentation. Um, I think uh, I went through all the questions. Um, so um, I don't have anything uh, in the chat window. Um, so I I, I just uh, want to say thank you once again, Beth, and um, and uh, uh, I, I this is uh, this is really great, and and I personally like. The webinar, uh, I mean your, your presentation as well, and um, I just want to welcome. And uh, I'll, I want to thank you on behalf of ASQ, ASQ Lean Enterprise Division, and uh, the webinar committee. Uh, that was this was a great presentation.